Welcome to our boat. <laughs> well, that's not ideal. It was pretty wild. We've actually torn another cleat. The bo sheared the bolt off the cleat. Did you just rip it? Again? Which is literally tearing as I'm. Wow. Oh, that is stunning. Look at that. Don't point it at me. Look at, point it at that. I take back everything I said about how lovely of a day it was. Welcome to our self-inflicted adventure. What seems like a lifetime ago, we left Australia intending to sail our way around the world. It's been a roller coaster since then, and while the plan has changed many times, we've been laughing our way through and learned a new lesson for every step of the way. And between us, the real adventure has only just begun. That's not ideal. Two burst fenders and one rope that has been completely chafed through. But luckily we had a very, very good guy looking after our boat, uh, the Ryan of Ryan and Sophie sailing. So Ryan's been coming here, keeping an eye on our boat in uh, some what seems to be quite bad weather here in Ponta Delgada when we were away. And uh, he's been like putting fenders over from the other side of the boat to this one so that our boat hasn't been damaged in any of the weather. So we do need to say a massive, massive thank you for those guys. Thank you. But we are finally back on the boat. After all that, we're finally back on the boat. This is the day after we've arrived back and we got back at like 11 o'clock last night, I think. It was a very late um, arrival and we just pretty much came back home and slept. This morning we've been catching up on a few things. We had an episode due today, so we've been working in the morning. I've just put a wash on and we've now had to deal, we're now thinking we need to deal with this whole fender situation. Yeah. There's so much to do when you go back from the boat. <laughs> like when you go back from a holiday, it's just, it's a little bit crazy. Oh, me personally, I am incredibly, incredibly glad to be back though. It's actually been about two months where we've been traveling. So we've gone to England, we've come back for about five days, we went to Turkey, we came back for about 10 days and then off to Italy again for 10 days. And I just want to be home now. <laughs> I've missed her. I really, really have missed being on the boat and I'm looking forward to having a few doing a few miles on her and staying on her for a little while <laughs> i don't want to go traveling anymore via plane a walk to the shops has produced one fender we will make do with that <laughs> meanwhile below decks adam was organizing some things of his own ah oh, what's the mess for today <laughs> So our journey to Madeira, we have two options. One is like a lot, a lot of wind, and one is not a lot of wind. And we got a taste of about, based on the forecast, about 80% of what went, what we're, what is the a lot of wind option last night, and it was a lot of wind. <laughs> it was pretty wild. We've actually torn another cleat, the sheared the bolt off the cleat. Um, on the bow because we were rocking and rolling so much around it here in the marina. So suffice to say I'm going to go with the not a lot of wind option which has prompted me to get the spinnaker in order. Um, we still don't have a pole but in the interim what we do have is this uh, sort of semi-repaired ATTN tacker which essentially lets you fly a symmetrical spinnaker asymmetrically as if you had the pole all the way forward hard up on the force day. In addition to that, Ryan and Sophie, who were here not long ago, gave us their sort of hand-me-down um, spinnaker sock because they now have a top-down furler for their asymmetric and don't need it. So they very kindly donated it to our cause to replace this rotten piece of so-and-so, which as you, Did can, you just rip it which again? is literally tearing as I'm. So this is why we've doing? really never attempted to mess with the spinnaker that much because I we're, we're short-handed and I don't want to have to do. I think it's called barn hauling, where you bring it in under the main. Like it's like a racing thing and it sort of takes many hands and the spinnaker often ends up in the drink. But with a sock and the tacker, we should be really well, like really perfectly capable of flying the spinnaker sort of asymmetrically to give us that little extra oomph downwind. The forecast from here to Madeira in the next few days is like very calm, but it might be just enough, you know, like nine to 10 
hopefully. Um, just enough for us to carry a spinnaker and, and get moving and then we'll have to just motor sail the rest. So there's lots of arc fleets passing through the Canaries at the moment and some volcano has gone up uh, there which has caused one of the islands to be evacuated. So there's a bit of a scramble for spots and we have a deposit down on a berth at a marina in Lanzarote and we don't want to miss it. So we, we just got to get down there. It's sort of like musical chairs and the music has stopped and we're all racing for a chair and I don't want to miss out. So today's job is to put the new sock together and rig up, rig it all up, get it ready and get rid of this horrible old piece of junk. It is ripping again. Yes. What are you doing? Well, look, I mean, it's... Hey, what's the business end? The, the top, the end that goes to the top of the mast. Sock. It's so nice and clean, I don't even want it to touch the dock. <laughs> Alright, top of the spinnaker is on the new sock. Oh, spinnaker's blowing away. It's a very long spinnaker. A little short. Uh, well, it's longer than the other one, so I think this has just worked like because you got to pin out the sheet and uh, it'll do. Significantly better than the last one. After all the work was done, it was finally time for some fun. Welcome to our boat. <laughs> okay, where do I start? <laughs> From the very beginning. Very good place to start. So if you just ignore all of the building works that are going on around us and ignore the noise that they're making, focus on me. We're back in Ponte Delgada and we've been back here um, a couple of days. So Adam has been ferociously studying. He is doing a theory course in the RYX. So he's been spending some time downstairs plugging away at that, which looks very, very dry. I've also been plugging away at all of our episodes from uh, that we've collected up. So we've both been busy downstairs on the boat. We thought it's a beautiful sunny day today and we're going to go for a hike. We're overdue for some movement and we also have been overdue for a sunny day because it's been quite miserable so we're going to take advantage of it and we're going to go for a hike around a lake with our friend Dennis who has been showing us all around this island because he's from here. So that's our plan for today. Alright, we're here at the entrance of the walk around the lake, um, as is I think half of Portugal because it's the first sunny day for I reckon about a week and a bit. Um, so it seems like everyone is out in force. to go up the hill and then down the hill in order to get to the lake and when I say hill they're pretty bloody big and steep so we're on the first stretch Whew. five minutes in I'm out of breath also eating a rice cracker most of the way so it doesn't help <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm filming the two guys and they look like Sam and Frodo off for an adventure. <laughs> and now they're looking at me giggling to myself. <laughs> Ah, 
<laughs> so good. <laughs> it's like true living off the land stuff. Uh, <laughs> just to clarify, he has a filter afterwards. <laughs> I don't think you could drink that one. Well, I just think if you're desperate enough, you could drink that. Who's going to try it first, Gara? Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> it's your bottle, I mean. <laughs> it's only fair. And then we'll wait five minutes, see, see whether it's <laughs> dead or not. See if he not. lives or dies. Okay. Yeah. Cool, yeah. Has it got... Mm. Tastes like water. <laughs> Strangely enough. <laughs> Strange. Oh, oh, wow. we're, oh, wow. we're at the top. Or at least it's flat. Oh, and yeah. then we go some part downhill. Finally. Oh, we're all very much out of breath. Oh my god. Wow. Oh wow. Oh, that is stunning. Look at that. Don't point it at me. Look at point <laughs> it at that. <laughs> wow. I see it through my glasses. <laughs> see what Kiara vision. Who needs one vision? Oh, I can't see anything. It's mixing with the. Oh, maybe a little. Wow. Ah. Oh. Half a tree. I could, yeah, blackberry. We always used to pick these in summer in England. But this one tastes good. Hmm. Well, it started out as a glorious sunny morning um, and it seems we've timed our run to perfection because the clouds are slowly setting in and the temperature is slowly dropping. We might even see a little bit of rain soon. So we're just on the second leg of the circuit, sort of to and, and back from the lake. It was such a good morning, such a good time to go out to that lake. We've been up to various viewpoints to look at that lake probably three times since we've been here and every time it's been sort of shrouded in cloud and quite windy. It's kind of nice to get out hiking again too. Like we didn't have as long as I would have liked to go and explore Turkey as much as we would have liked. Um, same for Italy, it was sort of go, go, go. Chiara and I are pretty like, pretty enthusiastic about the outdoors and and the Azores um, has just really rekindled that flame uh, because it's just this place like you just you walk for 20 minutes and you'll find some trail that goes for hours that is just every turn is better than the last So where we just sat for lunch, there was a beautiful lake there. It was Lake Fogo. That whole lake is actually the drinking water for um, this island. It comes from there and then goes through these channels here down to, I'm guessing, like a sanitary station or something like that. But that's why you didn't see anybody swimming in that lake. You're not allowed to swim there, you're not allowed to do anything. This is the drinking water for the whole island that comes through here. What have you found? A little trap. Oh. oh yeah, he's swimming upstream. Oh no, it's raining. Okay, I'm trying to capture a film of a trout upstream and it turns out I'm just not a very good nature photographer so um, it's starting to rain and there are better, <laughs> there's more pressing things to do like protect the cameras from the rain <laughs> so we've got to finish up this walk and head on not try and film trout. Mm -hmm. 
rain has begun and we are not home yet. Still raining. I take back everything I said about how lovely of a day it was. Terrible day to go for a walk. <laughs> Whose dumb idea was this? <laughs> no. I think no. we were planning to go to some hot springs after this though, which I certainly am looking forward to right now. Yeah. <laughs> I hope there's enough room for three. Oh no, it got through. I think it's officially through. Yeah. You did well, Jumper. You did well. As predicted, as soon as we are back at the cars, the rain has stopped. Well, after a hard but wet walk, we have come to the town called Furnish. They have hot springs here. Um, we're going to go into one that is in our hotel, so it's a kind of man-made one. Um, but they have several pools here, and I think it'll be very nice after a long walk to kind of relax in some hot water. Just chill out. Oh, what? Is it just shut? The gates just closed. Just then? Yeah. Are you kidding me? Blah, blah, blah. What are we doing? Uh, we're going to another furnace that's not as crowded. A little bit smaller, but uh, much less crowded. Oh, do I just jump right in, do I? Oh, I just can't get past that initial smell. It's just, it gets in your nostrils, you know? I know it's natural and all, but god damn, it smells like Russian eggs. Actually, that's, oh. that's me, sorry. Lunch is just 